If you explore the blighted village in Baldur's Gate 3 Early Access, you'll find an area beneath a cellar in an abandoned building guarded by some skeletons, and subsequently a magic mirror that acts as a lock and guardian barring entry to an unmanned laboratory formerly utilized and established by one Ilan Toth, an alchemist and wizard. In this laboratory, it is possible to find a tome of forbidden magic called the Necromancy of Fae. It is found behind a locked door that requires a key to open it, as conventional lockpicking will not work and for traps to be disarmed, and once you obtain it, it cannot be readily accessed, as you need a magical amethyst key to open it that you can only find after defeating a number of fae spiders, including a spider queen within the whispering depths beneath another abandoned building in the Blighted Village. Upon finding this gem, you will be able to open the book and peruse its contents. There are three saves involved in order to pass all the tests the book throws at you, with some classes such as wizards and warlocks having a somewhat easier time with the saves. But if all saving throws are successful, you gain 45 XP and the ability to speak with dead at will per long rest. This is in itself not an incredible reward, but the book seems to promise far more beyond the scope of early access. The warnings and descriptions you receive whilst handling and reading the book are quite foreboding and I do not believe this brief interaction early access to be the end of the story with regard to the book. Indeed, there probably is an extended story surrounding the book. The main hint and connection to what the story might entail lies in your interaction with the animated mirror lock that you must parlay with before entering the laboratory. In being interrogated, you will be asked about what you think about the Red Wizard of Thay called Saz Tam, and the correct answer will invariably be one that requires you to denounce Saztam, suggesting that Ilan Toth, who created the Guardian Lock, has a very negative opinion of Saztam. The exact origin of the necromancy of Thay is not known. However, if I were to speculate, I think it very likely to be a creation of Saztam, rather than the wizard and alchemist Ilan Toth. The fact that the tome is found behind an unpickable lock and is guarded by traps tells us that the laboratory's owner does not wish for others to tamper with the book and that it is possibly being held to safeguard it rather than to exploit it. If Saztam scribed the tome and the relationship between Ilantoth and Saztam is truly negative, then this would explain why the book is locked away and inaccessible. But who exactly is Saztam and why is he relevant to this and by extension possibly to you, the player character? And what or where is Thay? If the necromancy of Thay is to have a further impact on the story of the player character, then it might behoove us to get to know both its hypothetical author and the land he hails from. The land of Thay lies far to the east, far away from Baldur's Gate and the Sword Coast, and is a land of wizards. Thay is, in the simplest of terms, a majocracy. That is not to say that the only people who dwell there are wizards, but that magic and wizardry rule supreme there. Slavery is a constant and permanent part of life in Thay, and many practices that are regarded as evil and are frowned upon are carried out in Thay with little heed to conventional norms. To obtain any sort of authority in Thay, one must be, simply put, a wizard, and more specifically, a red wizard. Red wizards are elite spellcasters who hyper-specialize in the schools of magic. You might, for example, recall Edwin from Baldur's Gate 1 and 2, who is just such a wizard specializing in conjuration. All red wizards specialize in one of the eight schools of magic, abjuration, alteration, conjuration, divination, enchantment, illusion, invocation, or necromancy, seeking consummate mastery of said school. Traditionally, each school has been headed by a so-called Zulkir, typically the most talented of specialists in the respective school, who acts as both a magical and political authority. Their intense investment in a specific school of magic allows them to prepare more spells than an average wizard specialist can, and weave together spells of greater potency in the respective school of magic compared to those of a normal wizard specialist. Such wizards hold virtually all of the power and authority in Thay, and exemplify some of the worst traits of humanity, practicing the worst forms of magic and encouraging and partaking in activities that few other nations would brook, such as demonology, active necromancy, slavery, and worse. The Zulkirs were historically the absolute rulers of the nation of Thay, ruling from a council of eight, 
each representing one of the eight schools of magic. I say were because this centuries-old political structure came to a screeching halt when Saz Tam made a bid for absolute power in Thay, challenging all the other Zakirs in a winner-take-all war to the bitter end, ultimately resulting in the dissolution of the traditional political power structure of Thay and in the elevation of Saz Tam as high regent of all of Thay, as well as the absolute destruction of his enemies. And this should give a sense of the power and danger that Saz Tam represents. And the schism pitted Saz Tam against the entirety of the other Zulkirs, some of the most potent spellcasters in all of Faerun. And he not only bested them, but in most cases, entirely eliminated them from the face of Faerun by the end of the war. With a scant few managing to escape and live in exile, far removed from Thay. Saz Tam was once the Zulkir of Necromancy, before becoming the absolute ruler of Thay, and has enjoyed over three centuries of life, or better put, unlife, as a lich. He's widely regarded as one of the most dangerous and powerful spellcasters in Faerun, and has access to resources that other wizards can only dream of. After the end of the Ten-Year War that resulted in Saz Tam's ascendancy, he set about creating his own nation of Thay, a country populated by just as many undead as living, all of which are ultimately subservient to Saz Tam. As a result of this, Thay has more undead than any other region of Faerun, where they are used for everything from filling out Thay's military ranks to carrying out menial tasks as laborers and porters. And in mockery of the former Zulkir's council, Saz Tam has reformed the council of Zulkir's and filled it with his lackeys and loyalists who carry out his will. Saz Tam has access to many unique necromantic spells and special forms of undead servants, as well as powerful magic items and artifacts, and is both a prolific scholar of magic who has created many spells, as well as the tyrant. And given these facts, it seems much more likely than not that the author of the Necromancy of Thay could very well be none other than Saz Tam himself, given all the clues we have. Despite all of that, there is yet another hook that may tie into the main story, although it's very hypothetical, and that is Saz Tam's personal dealings with the god Bane, a century ago before the god was relegated to the status of quasi-deity. Saz Tam summoned Bane and offered the god his soul after 1,000 years in exchange for power and knowledge of the chaotic magic that emerged after the murder of Mistra in 1385 DR, an event sometimes referred to as the Spell Plague. How or if this might tie into the plot surrounding the Dead Three is not known, but it is certainly possible. And yet another consideration might be that of the wizard Ilan Toth himself, and that he might be an actual renegade red wizard, one of the rebels whom Saz Tam ousted and is therefore opposed to him, which would make all the more sense because the name Ilan Toth is almost certainly Thean in origin. For all of these reasons, I am reasonably convinced that the necromancy of Thay has far more going for it than meets the eye, or has been revealed to us in early access, and I fully expect for far more to be revealed upon full release, both in terms of its content and its place in the story and plot of Baldur's Gate 3. As always, thanks for tuning in. Please leave a like, comment, share, and subscribe, as it really helps out my channel, and I'll check you out next time. Take care.